Seventh chords in the key of G, guys. What even are seventh chords? What's a key? What is this? How'd you get here? Oh, I need to let you know. This is like an intermediate lesson, but I'm but I'm teaching it so it's appropriate for beginners. It's a beginner friendly intermediate chord theory lesson, guys. So first of all, what is a key? What's a key? A key is just it's, it's just a group of notes that sound good together. That's really all it is. And that group of notes all tends to like be gravitationally pulled to this one main note. They call it the tonic. I have, I, I have no idea why they call it a tonic. Uh, isn't a tonic like a medicine or liquor or like a, it's tonic water. It's just like bitter water with sugar in it. And so that's the, when they talk about the, the key of G, they. Who's they? I'm talking about it. When I talk about the key of G, I'm referring to that group of notes that all sounds good together, that all the notes kind of revolve around the note G. This is a note G here. This is a chord G. Just so you know, speaking of chords, plain old regular major and minor chords, also known as triads, are where you take three specific notes from, from those notes in the key, and you put three specific notes together, and you've got a major chord. You take another three notes, you put those together, you have a minor chord. You take another three notes, you have a different major chord. So the major and minor chords are made up of three notes from the key. Okay, great, fantastic. Seventh chords add a specific fourth note. So a major and minor chord just has three notes. Seventh chord has four notes. Now, it needs to be specific notes organized in a specific way and everything. But for right now, all I need you to remember is that a regular major and minor chord, three notes. A seventh chord, four notes. Okay? Let's just learn some of these chords. So here's just a regular G major chord. Wait a minute. Uncle Stewart, you lied immediately. Let me turn the brightness down so I don't keep staring at myself over there. You told me that major chords only had three notes. This has six notes in it, you son of a gun. Yeah, well, it does have six notes we're playing, but that's because we're repeating some of the notes. We've got G, B, D, that's three, and then we have G, D, G. So we're just repeating G and D. So it's still only three different notes. They have to be different notes, guys. So, but we're not playing this one because this is a boring major chord. We want to do, um, guys, in the key of G, we're going to change that major chord into a G major seven chord. You just add a seven to the end, G major seven. Check this out. Put your pointer finger on the third fret of the top string. Skip the next string entirely, except I would love it if you would touch it with the pad of your pointer finger to mute it. Put your ring finger on the fourth fret of the third string from the top. Pinky, fourth fret, third string from the bottom. Put your middle finger on the third fret of the second string from the bottom. Guys, this is our G major seven chord. Oh, what a beautiful chord that we have played here on this day. Now, normally in the key of G, we'd go to an A minor chord. Now we're gonna go to an A minor seven chord. Yeah, just put a seven at the end. So go ahead and play five on the top string with your pointer finger. Mute the second string from the top again. Then play five on the third string from the top. Play five on the third string from the bottom with your ring finger. Then with your pinky, play five on the second string from the bottom. A minor seven chord. Some of you may have played it over here. That's great. That's not what I'm showing you right now. We're, we're sticking, okay, look. There's another video I, that I just made talking about the G major scale and we play the G major scale like this. So I'm gonna use those positions for each of the chords we're playing today. I, that didn't make sense, whatever. Go watch the other video. Bye. I, I'm not leaving. Don't say bye when you're not leaving, it's rude. A minor seven chord, great. Next, we need to do a B minor seven chord. You might get scared when you hear B, the words B minor because you think of a bar chord. Guess what? The B minor seven, you don't have to play it as a bar chord. Just take your A minor seven and move it one, two frets over. So now you're on seven, then muted, then seven, seven, seven. B minor seven, guys. So far, we've got G major seven, A minor seven, B minor seven. Now, you notice how we use that same chord shape? We just took this shape with our hands and just moved it two frets up. 
Every single one of these chords we're learning, you can move to a different spot and just play a different, different like, like here's a G major seven. Oh, look, B flat major seven. Whoa, check out this D major seven. We're not gonna worry about those today, but I just want you to know that these chord shapes are useful in other places as well. All right, let's learn the next one. We need to, normally we'd have a C major, but now we're gonna have a, that's right, a C major seven. Put your pointer finger on the third fret of the second string from the top. I recommend you use the tip of your finger to mute the top string. Then with your ring finger, play five on the third string from the top. With your middle finger, play four on the third string from the bottom. And with your pinky, play five on the second string from the bottom, you guys. This is a G major seven chord. Looks like a bar chord, but you do not have to actually push down on everything with your pointer finger. You can just have your pointer finger hanging out. C major seven chord. Oh, now on this next chord, normally we'd go to a D. In the key of G, normally we go, we go to a D chord. Here's the thing. We're not gonna do a D major seven chord because that's where we get into a little bit of kookiness with, with the theory that we're not gonna get into today. But even though the G major turns into a G major seven, the C major turns into a C major seven, the D does not turn into a D major seven. It doesn't turn into a D minor seven. It turns into just a D seven. Yes, there is a difference between major seven and seven. It's just the way it goes, okay? But if we just play a D seven here, like it's okay, but in my oh so humble opinion, I think this chord sounds corny. It sounds corny in most situations. You can use it. I'm not judging. I mean, I did literally just judge the chord. I called it corny, but it's just not. What I, we're gonna we're gonna play a D9. So we're gonna stray from our seven chord rule, but I think it's gonna be for the best. Put your middle finger on the fifth fret of the second string from the top. Put your pointer finger on the fourth fret of the third string from the top. Put your ring finger on the fifth fret of the third string from the bottom. Put your pinky on the fifth fret of the second string from the bottom. This is what I like to call a D9 chord. Remember a triad was three notes. A seventh chord was we added a fourth note. A nine chord is where we add a fifth note. Wait a minute though, wait a minute. Add a fifth note but I'm only pushing on four different strings here. What gives? Yeah, so, you okay. So, you don't actually need to have all five notes in there. If you add the fifth note, you can get rid of one of those original three if you don't want it. Like in this case, well, it doesn't even matter. You, you don't always need to have all five notes for a nine chord. You can get rid of one. Well, this is... I didn't, I didn't want to get into this. Look what you made me do. We have three more chords. Can you handle it? We just did the D9. Now we're going to a, an E minor seven, guys. This one, unfortunately, is a bar chord, but I think you can handle it. Put your pointer finger on the seventh fret of the second string from the top. You're gonna mash down on all the bottom five strings with your pointer finger. Put your middle finger on the eighth fret of the second string from the bottom and your ring finger on the ninth fret of the third string from the top. People of the world, friends and relatives, this is an E minor seven chord. Okay, great. It's instead of playing this E minor, we got this E minor seven. If you notice these seventh chords, you might be thinking, why are we even doing this? They just, you know, they add a little bit of uh, complexity to the harmony, but what that really means is they, they make the chords a little more like, vibey usually. I can't say the word usually. They usually make the chords have a little more atmosphere, a little more vibiness. All right, E minor seven chord, great. Then we go to the worst one. It's not the worst one to play, it's just the ugliest one. It's the F sharp minor seven flat five. Yeah, I know, it's crazy. F sharp minor seven flat five. Pointer finger, nine on the second string from the top. Ring finger, 10 on the third string from the top. Middle finger, nine on the third from the bottom. And then pinky on 10 of the second from the bottom. So it goes like nine, 10, nine, 10. Make sure you mute the top and bottom strings. F sharp minor seven and flat five. It sounds hideous. You know who uses it? Rex Orange County uses this chord a lot. He uses it to great effect. I'm gonna call this the Rex Orange County chord. One more. 
one more chord, but you already kind of know it. Remember the C major seven we did a little while ago? That was three, five, four, five. We're going to take that same shape and move it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven frets up. So your pointer finger is on the 10th fret. So we're on 10, 12, 11, 12. This is a G major seven chord. Wait a minute. I thought this was a G major seven chord. It is. I'm just playing it in two different positions, you guys. Two different octaves, sort of. You, you don't really move chords up an octave, but you kind of do. So I know, I know. You're just going to... Look, look, here's the deal. I'm trying to keep this video kind of short, okay? I don't want it to be three hours long. And so I'm cutting some corners. It's not. I'm not lying to you about things. I'm just not going into detail about everything. God, this is this is why I didn't want to make this video to begin with. All right, let's just play through all eight of those chords. I know you don't remember them, but whatever. You can watch me do it. I'll give you close-ups of each one. First, G major 7 on the third fret of the top string. Then A minor 7 with fifth fret on the top string. Then B minor 7, seventh fret on the top string. Then C major 7, pointer finger on the third fret of the second string from the top. Then we're going to our D9, our one that's not technically a seven chord, with the middle finger on the fifth fret of the second string from the top. Then E minor seven, the only bar chord, pointer finger on the seventh fret of the second string from the top. Then F sharp minor seven flat five, pointer finger on nine of the second string from the top, the ugliest of them all. And then finally the G major seven with pointer finger on 10 of the second string from the top. There are our seventh chords in the key of G major. Now, we're done learning the chords, but wh why are we why are we doing this? What is the point of this? Yeah, they're more vibey than regular chords, but what am I supposed to do with this information? Well, here's the deal. One, the more you play these chords, the more you will get used to the sound of them and you will be able to identify the sound. It, guys, it's all just training your ear to hear more things and you can I, you can figure out songs easier, you can write your own songs and be more creative because there's more things that you can hear and more things that you know how to put into the guitar. I hate it when I do when I talk like that. I just say the same things everyone else has said. I'm just more agitated, and I feel like that makes it worth it for some reason. Here's another thing. If you want to write a song that has that kind of like jazzy or indie type sound, just just m memorize these chords. It's eight chords. You can do it. And just if you just pick chords at random from this list of eight chords, they're going to sound good together, almost certainly. Look, I'm going to play a few random chords from this list right now. We're going to see if I, we can't play something that sounds okay. One, two, three, four. That was fine. It sounded it was a little funky. I didn't mean for it to be funky like that. What if I wanted something that wasn't groovy? I just wanted like a cool, vibey thing. What about this? What if I go, uh... nice you know whatever okay uh one more thing you can do with this is this is, will take a tiny bit of trial and error but if there you're playing a song and it has an e minor in it maybe try an e minor seven in there see how that sounds even if, if whether it's an original song of yours or it's a different song just throw it throw that e minor seven chord in there see what you think if they ask for a g chord try a g major seven chord maybe you'll be pleasantly surprised by the outcome of the three uh, theory videos that I've recorded so far, this is my least favorite. 